<laughs> All right, let's get it going right here, right now. This is the Triple Threat Podcast being brought to you today on the Vince Russo Brand Network, as also the Realm Network. And if you didn't know my by now, my name is Chad, and as always, I'm joined by my tag team partner. Where is he? Nowhere the, to be found. <laughs> one and only JP John Paz, and we all know who this guy is. Sitting right behind me, he is the franchise Shane Douglas, the host of the Triple Threat Podcast. Okay. Shane, we are on location today. Yeah, this is our first ever in, what, 104 episodes, and we're on vacation in beautiful, steaming hot Charlotte, North Carolina for the gathering, and uh, so it's been, been a pretty good weekend so far. It's been great, and what we're going to do is we're going to knock out a little bit of an episode here because we all are in Charlotte, North Carolina. This guy's been here for like five days, it <laughs> seems. John and I got here a couple days ago. We made a little trip out of it, so we didn't get a chance to record. Night, oh my there. gosh, I'm still feeling it right now. Three o'clock in the morning last night. Uh, thinking I, I might as well have thought I was a member of the Four Horsemen. Uh, I'm still going. So <laughs> <laughs> I was a member of the Four Horsemen last night, not the Triple Threat. Although, I mean, you, oh, you Triple Threat guys, you Triple Threat guys, I think you guys know how to really uh, cut a <laughs> rug. Ourselves. Exactly, exactly. So we're uh, we're here in Charlotte, man. We're at the gathering. It's at the beautiful Hilton University uh, Hotel. What a campus. I mean, just what an amazing, like, you can go walk around on a boardwalk. You know, geysers and yeah. <laughs> ponds and ducks and Canadian geese. Yeah. It's been uh, it's been a hell of a week. But, man, Shane, I know you've, uh, you've been pretty damn busy yourself. Yeah, but first, first night I got here Thursday, we had a, a barbecue. Uh, first barbecue I was ever in in an in inside room. Uh, but we had a lot of great fans, and then that night at eleven thirty or eleven forty-five, did a Q and A. Uh, had a room full of people, a lot of great questions, met a lot of good fans, and then uh, yesterday we had uh, uh, Ricky Steamboat and I did a picture uh, session in the afternoon, and then last evening, of course, the banquet. Which I, to be honest with you, it was a bit long, but it was probably the best banquet ever I'd ever been to. Uh, they gave awards out to. Barry Wyndham, uh, uh, Bobby Heenan's, uh, uh, for Bobby Heenan to his to his wife, uh, his widow. Uh, uh, who else did they give to? Uh, Missy Hyatt. Uh, I'm getting a brain fart now. Uh, you know, it, it was all really well done. They had people coming in. Uh, like they had Greg Gagne introduce. Uh, uh, Bob. One of the other ones was to uh, the widow of uh, uh, Frank. Uh, uh, Bruce, Bruce Brady. Brady and you know I, I, for, for, for me the first time I'd met a lot of these people and I'd always heard their names and heard of them knew of them of course but got a chance to meet them and for us like I always tell the fans these type of things for us are like uh, family reunions you know I, I love always seeing Barry Windham I, I learned a ton from him and just watching him uh, you know when he was the machine in the ring uh, and then, of course, seeing guys uh, like uh, Ricky Steamboat. Uh, this is the types of places where I typically see them. So, so far, so good. Been a great time. And tonight, uh, the, the first uh, uh, set of matches that I'll be on, uh, that I guess they had matches last night, but, uh, uh, you know, pretty busy weekend. And then tomorrow, uh, autograph signings and some more pictures before flying out. And then number one, son goes to college on Tuesday, which just blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you could wrestle 10 matches tonight. The emotions are going to be heavy for you uh, when your son goes to college oh, yeah, yeah. next week, uh, a couple of days here. But, yeah, I mean, it's so cool. If you've never been to a convention, and this one, I, I, please bear with us if you're watching this on video because I'm holding up my phone here. <laughs> Uh, to get this done for everybody uh, on the brand. But if you've never been to one of these conventions, I mean, it's one of those instances, Shane, and I know this is just you walking through the lobby. You turn the corner, and there's Ricky Steamboat. Yeah. You get off the elevator, and there's Bob Backlund. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're you going into the bar, and last night we were hanging out with the Dirty White Boy and Jerry Stubbs. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just one of those things you never know who you're going to run into. Jerry Stubbs taking a liking to my wife, by the way, which oh, is, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I think I might be able to get like a maybe like a, a chin lock now on him <laughs> at this point. But just uh, you just never know who you're going to run into, and it, it is very cool to see the fan interaction. And John and I worked with uh, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard today. And again, it's another, you know, it's another thing. It's the horsemen, and we're in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's literally horseman country. Yeah, absolutely. So these fans, I mean, they're bringing out stuff that's 35, 40 years old. They're talking yeah. about posters and programs and pictures and sure. cards and, you know, action figures. Yeah. It's it's so cool. And, you know, it, it makes you, I hate to use like a cliche like old school is cool, <laughs> but this is an old school crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you cross genres in this place because yes. you kind of touch both the modern era and that golden era. Yeah. 
Well, you know, when you look at fans, I, you know, I've always said I've, I've never been a rock and roll star, so I'm sure they'd say the same thing about their fans. But wrestling fans, uh, when you see somebody come that has uh, uh, some piece of memorabilia, 35, 40 years old, and they, they want it signed, I mean, that to, to even hold on to something that long, you can tell that means something to that person. And that, that, that professional wrestling had made a connection to them. And when you hear the questions uh, from the people and see the people in the hallways and the lobby of the hotel back and forth, and you can see that these people have been lifelong lovers of professional wrestling. Like Missy Hyatt said in her acceptance speech last night when she got the, uh, the award, uh, you know, we're all Marks. You know, we're all part mm -hmm. of the same family because we're just Marks that had such a passion that we decided to get into the business. Uh, so for us, like I said, it's, it's a great big family reunion. You get to meet fans that are, have been passionate for decades. Uh, I mean, let's face it, all the guys that are here, pretty much most of the guys that are here, uh, have been retired or semi-retired, uh, haven't wrestled on national television in decades, and yet you still see a building full of fans here excited to see an Arn Anderson, a Tully Blanchard, a Kevin Sullivan, a, a long list of all the hundred guys that are here. So uh, for everybody that's been here and, and here, going to be here tonight and tomorrow, uh, thanks for coming. It's been great so far. And if you haven't come, make sure you make out to a convention because they're a great experience. Is it bad that even last night in the bar I was a little nervous around Kevin Sullivan not knowing what he was going to pull out of that jacket? <laughs> well, M Moose said uh, as we were walking down the hall last night and ran into my stalker in the hall about the 18th <laughs> time. Uh, I, I, he must be like hiding behind the curtains or something out there. Uh, but he said, uh, Kevin's, I said, what, what, what's Kevin doing? And he said, he's probably downstairs cutting a cross in his forehead. <laughs> so yeah. I said, well, then I found out you guys were with him. I thought, oh, geez, it's going to be hell. It, yeah, it was crazy because, like, literally at the bar, we, we went out to eat. My wife and I went out to eat, which is lovely, during yeah. your nine-hour banquet, which is lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we came back, and we, you know, we, ch we freshened up. We went down to the bar. And, you know, it was like Kemp Patera sitting at one table, and then another table was Andrea Anderson, Greg Valentine, Kevin Sullivan. Turtle. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was so cool to see, like, just these different guys. Everywhere you turn, there's just somebody else coming up. And then Jerry Stubbs, Dirty White Boy. And then all of a sudden, you did JR just walked sure. through. Jim Ross literally casually walked through, and I said to my wife, I go, there goes Jim Ross. And she goes, where? I was like, he just walked away. He just, he just went in there, and Tully Blanchard <laughs> peeked his head into the bar. And it's uh, it's one of these. This is a four day event. Yeah. You know, and you think about four day events for anything, you got to put in a hell of an effort. And this guy, T Mart Marty, he did a, yeah. a pretty damn good job. And uh, I think a lot of it has to do with us northeasterners. Maybe that could be it. You know, us <laughs> northeasterners know how to do a uh, do do a convention well. But uh, you know, I don't know, Shane. I mean, what else can you say about uh, this? What's let me let me ask you this question. So. You got your your signing is tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You did your thing with Ricky. Yes. Um, is there something that you've seen a fan carrying around, like a, an item or a piece or a belt or something that you just do a double take at and just go like, wow, man, that is pretty cool that this yeah. guy has. Is there anything, anything that really catches your eye? Well, yesterday when Ricky and I were doing the, uh, the, the joint photos, you know, every so often a person would come in with just with Ricky or just with me, but most of them were one of us together. And a guy came in and he had the NWA WCW tag team belts and said, Hey, you guys want to use these for your, for your photo shoot? You know, so how many people are walking around with the NWA title, you know, both of them, yeah. not, not just one replica, uh, yeah, all this stuff. Like, you know, when somebody comes in the thing I'm, I mark out for is when I see the old programs, you know, yeah. something from 30, 35, 40 years ago. Right. And, you know, just reading it and looking at the lineup and thinking, this would have been a show that I would have been at as a kid. You know, because right. that, that was the kind of stuff that I really loved going to. Uh, so yeah, it's it's always it always impresses you. But you know, like for me, uh, there's a there's a guy that's here. He's been wanting me to do this for about two years. Uh, I had done it one time for one fan in Legends of the Ring, where he brought a great big poster of the uh, belt throwdown, and he wanted me to write out the entire uh, speech. Well, that's a you know, as you know, I'm a pretty verbose person, and uh, <laughs> uh, that was a pretty long promo. And to write literally the entire thing yeah. took some time, especially because you want to space it right and not run out of space at the bottom of this guy's poster. Right, or, right. Uh, so there's a guy here that said that he's he wants to get the same thing, and, and I finally relented and said, okay, you know, let, let Moose know the big ugly guy with the tattoos on his arms. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, so I, I've been getting a lot more uh, requests for that since that first part, the, the word leaked out from the first person I did it for, and now more and more people are wanting that. Uh, but, you know, it's in my head it just blows my mind that, that 
what, 24, 25 years now later, that people still even remember that, let alone wanting, you know, some kind of a piece of memorabilia from that. Right. And Ricky Steamboat was talking about that last night whenever another person, how did I forget this, Macho Man was uh, given a, 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 a posthumous award to, uh, to his brother, of course, Lanny. And Ricky introduced Lanny and got up and, and told the story that he had told me years ago when we were on the road about how he and Macho had set up the, yeah, uh, the yeah. WrestleMania. That's a great match. story. Yeah, the match is, if you, like, I'm sure there's nobody out there watching this that hasn't seen it yet, but if you haven't or you haven't seen it for a while, pick, pull it up on YouTube right now because it is just a fucking amazing match. And when you watch how hard both of those guys are working and how many spots they got in, he said it last night, and I never realized it, the match is only 17 minutes long. Right. And they had something like 35 segments and I think 22 false finishes. Yeah. You know, to squeeze all those that Those sequences, is, um, yeah, unbelievable. Amazing. Just, you know, you, as, a, as a worker to performer, and you watch two guys like that creating absolute magic. Right. And what I didn't know until last night was R Ricky talked about how uh, typically, going into a big match like a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam, they would let you work on the like B or C towns right. to work some kinks out. And that one, they then stopped doing that, so they weren't able to work together. But they would often every night write down spots and kick them around and mold them. Right. But never really had a chance. So the fact that that night at WrestleMania three was the first time they were in the ring actually performing the spots that they had set up and, and, and crafted out, and then you look how just perfection that match is. Unbelievable. It is totally so so much mad respect for those guys and what they can do. Yeah, and they were on the floor literally in, in arenas practicing, yeah. you know, yes. we gotta do this, we gotta do yes. that. I don't wanna say practicing, they were going over different things that they were gonna do in the match. Yeah. And yeah, it became a, a, a masterpiece that I mean, everybody across the board. I mean, sure. I've even heard Jesse the Body Ventura say it was the greatest match he's ever seen. Yeah, I mean, it's like unbelievable. Jesse don't push stuff over like that. No. It's not like Jesse's no. MO. So. And especially if it's somebody else, you know, he's yes. putting over somebody yeah. else yeah. to that extent, <laughs> it's a big deal. But, you know, yeah, Ricky Steamboat, I mean, he really, he's a guy, and again, I saw him getting off the elevator, I just walked by, I was like, wow, that's Ricky. The Dragon Steamboat. And all the times I work with Ricky Steamboat, interviewed Ricky Steamboat, I still get that, Oh yeah. you know, like, yeah. wow. I showed my wife, I said, that's Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, <laughs> Just that's walked in sure. the room because, yes, he's Sergeant Slaughter. He's a little, you know, he's a little older, but he's still Sergeant Slaughter. You and see him, he, looks like he, Sergeant he Slaughter. still leads with his chin <laughs> when he walks into the room. But here, this was great. You were up, you know, obviously you weren't on the convention floor with us, but Bob Backlund. Yeah. Known to be... A little, a little, you know, eccentric. Yeah. Is that being Good kind? Is no, eccentric? It's, it's okay. No, known to be a little eccentric at conventions. All of a sudden, he just starts yelling, and you turn around, and I even saw Tully Blanchard turn around. He has Sergeant Slaughter in a cross-face chicken wing <laughs> across the other side of the convention floor, and it's just like, man, only in a wrestling convention can you see yeah. Bob, Bob Backlund putting Sergeant Slaughter <laughs> in a cross-face chicken wing in 2019, yeah. right? Or, I mean, how great, how great is that? that? Yeah, you're not going to catch it at a Walmart or a, a get-go anyplace. You're going to have to go come to a convention to see something like that. Now, with the dinner, now I know there was a long dinner because we, we knew a couple people who were in the dinner and they yeah. were they were even saying, like, this is a, this is a, this yeah. a friggin' long dinner, yeah. right? It, it was. Everybody, I mean, all the speeches were great. Yeah. All the presentations were great. Uh, you know, the, all the guests I had at my table were great. I mean, it, 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 there was no bad experience. Right, so it right. It just got long. You know, at 6.30, you're thinking you may be, be out yeah. by 9.30. Yeah. And around 11 o'clock when we finally let out, yeah, you could see people holding it, holding, have to go to the bathroom until they literally was up to here, and then they zip out and come running back in. Uh, but no, it was, it was a good, good experience. Like I said, I think the best one I've ever and, been And what I want to say was is that you guys sat with a group of fans. So yes. from what I was told, there was basically fans were given a list. Uh, like, I don't know if it was priority or if it was like special drawing or you pick your name out of a hat. Yeah, no, but fans paid X amount of dollars. I don't know how much it was to have this banquet go on and have a wrestler sit at the table. Mm. So did you have, were they like asking you guys questions intermittently? Like, how did that work? And how did you like kind of spending that intimate time with the fans? Well, when we first got in there at 630, excuse me, we were told what room or what table we were at. Anyway, I went and sat down, and the, the guest joined me, and we spoke for probably, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour just answering questions and just, you know, batting stuff back and forth, like, you know, sort of like we do, we're doing right now, and uh, they all had great questions, and, you know, for me, it's amazing that there wasn't one, and and lately I've been seeing this, like, like walking around the hotel with my stalker again in the hall, he's probably outside <laughs> the door right now, uh, and, you know, at the dinner, 
it, it hasn't been the same questions over and over again. It's been questions from a different perspective or asking about, you know, one guy asked about, you know, what was it like to train with Dominic Tanucci and, and Mick Foley and all the guys. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and they were all very well versed. Uh, they, they were familiar with Brian Hildebrand, Mark Curtis, and they were familiar with Cody Michaels and, uh, you know, being in Freedom, Pennsylvania. So, like, that's – like, that anybody would even put that in the, in the, in the brain memory cell someplace, that it was Freedom, Pennsylvania, uh, it just astounds me. But that's, you know, the, that, again, the, the, it's the passion of the wrestling fans. Right. I had a really good group of guys that I was sitting with, and, and I talked to Steamboat afterwards, and he said the same thing about his table. It looked like everybody in that room was having a great time. That's cool. Now – we usually talk about it and kind of laugh, like, Shawn Michaels, yes, you, could, you know, he's not your favorite person in the world. Vince McMahon, yes, not your favorite person in the whole world. Was this a different crop of questions than yeah. you would normally get because yeah. this is a more of that old school, like, we're talking, this is Crockett territory, legit, horseman yes. country. Like, were you getting different questions than yeah. you normally get? very few WWF questions. The only question I think I got at the table last night about WWF was, uh, um, you know, when, when you work there, uh, you know, like, when did you realize it really? It was a question that segued out of the question about the revolution. Right. And, oh, okay. You know, so the, everything else was pretty much centered around NWA or the wrestlers that were big here in the NWA. Right, right. Uh, oddly enough, there's not one question about the belt throwdown, which really? I was sort of surprised by. See, yeah. and, and I'm going to tell you something kind of funny. That's basically all I talked about at the bar last <laughs> night. Because people were saying, like, are you guys going to do anything for the 25th anniversary? You know, what's coming up? And we're saying, like, yeah, we'll probably do something. That episode we did at the beginning, which you can still find and people do li- listen to still when we covered it for two and a half hours. Right, right. I mean, that kind kind of was like the template that might call for a rebroadcasting just because that was so comprehensive yeah. but yeah it's 25 years and like what two weeks you know so yes. i was talking oh, about it last God, night it that quickly. yeah 20, right wait, we're at, well it's the what was 17th it, today yeah was it the 24th we did that or 23rd 24th yeah it's uh oh, it's right around the yeah. corner yeah, so geez. i actually that that's what i was talking about last night was with a couple different people was are you going to do anything about the throwdown, because I had a lot of people coming up, and I should have mentioned that. And I should have mentioned that to, uh, to to Vince off the top here, too. A lot of people coming up talking about the show and saying that they love that we're doing the video and that, yes. you know, they love the stuff that's been coming out of it, and they love that appearance with Ben Hameen a couple weeks ago. Mm, right. And that's what, you know. You, you, Which I will be reciprocating very soon. As soon as Connor goes to college on Tuesday, uh, I suspect I'll have a, a lot more free time because I have literally been on a scavenger hunt for the last month and a half. <laughs> it's crazy. Anybody, any parents out there that have sent a kid to college, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you guys have a couple years to go before you get into it. But Many. start collecting now because <laughs> uh, it'll take you about that long to get it all together. I think by the time our youngest goes to college that we're going to be taking those Jetson cars. Yeah. You know the one where George Jetson? Je- George Jetson would throw his briefcase <laughs> yeah. and the car would pop out of it like a bubble. I think that's the car that we're going to be taking our, our our uh, youngest daughter or, or to college. The new in. Uber helicopters, right? Yeah, yeah. Would you get one of those? I wouldn't get in a regular Uber. There, there, exactly. There wouldn't be a chance in hell I'm getting in that, a driverless car. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. That was a conversation also had last night, you know, <laughs> around, let's see, what? So we, we, we got in about three, so maybe around 1245-ish of wanting to go to different uh, establishments in the, the local Charlotte, North Carolina area. Uh, hey, let's get an Uber and go to this place. I said, I don't do Uber. Yeah. I don't do because you know what Uber is. It's just a guy in a car. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially now, like when you see all these stories of you know these young women getting in these and they disappear. They're found dead a day or two later, or you know, they're attempted rapes. <laughs> I, 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 it just seems to me like getting in a car with somebody you don't know. Yeah. And you're trusting a little screen to say, well, this is Joe Blow, and he's a great guy or a great woman. You have no idea who that person is. They got a gun under that seat or something. And, yeah. Uh, and the same thing, like I said, with that driverless car thing, I, I just can't imagine anybody voluntarily getting one of those things because I would never do it. How about a wrestlerless match? Yeah, well, they have that. Yeah, <laughs> just a ring. Yeah, the invisible The match. invisible is a blank canvas, ropes, entrances, pyro, yeah. and then a, an announcer calling the action. Wrestling at its very finest. Would we call that suspension of disbelief, Wrestling yeah. Federation? Yeah, I would say uh, the suspension of a whole lot more of that kind of stuff, including the lower colon. <laughs> That's a pretty damn good point. So, I mean, like, you know, we wanted to pop on here today. We wanted to get something out here for this week's episode and, and just kind of go over it. So we'll title this episode 104, but mini-sode. next week. Yeah, mini-sode. Th- exactly. mini sode. We're on video because I will say, Shane, you did guarantee video. Last yeah, week, that's right. That's you did guarantee, guarantee video. Hey, by the way, way off the subject, uh, did you see Barry Windham? 
He's lost over 100 pounds. I, he looks phenomenal. I did. I Now, Br Barry Windham is a guy that I always, like, I love yeah. Barry Windham. I love yeah. watching his matches. I've worked with him a few times. Have you ever seen a Barry Windham match you didn't like? I've never seen yeah, a Barry Windham right. match that I don't like. Even when they were leaving the, the WWF in 85, him and Rotundo, they were leaving. The mm -hmm. The match where they lost the titles was very anticlimactic. It was still a damn good match. Cause oh, he, gets, sure. he gets hit with classy Freddie Blassie's cane on the back of his head. Right. You would have thought he was dead. Yeah. So, no, that, there is never a Barry Windham match that I never liked. But he walked by earlier, and he came over, and he said hi to Arn. And I saw from his T-shirt, yeah. Barry Windham has not updated his, his laundry since yeah. he lost all that weight. This, this, his sleeve was, like, out to here with yeah. his arms sticking out of it. He yeah. looked fantastic. He's, you know, when I first met him, he was a really tall guy. He was yeah. obviously a you know, tall guy. But he was leaner built and and i never really saw the the similar like he didn't look to me like blackjack mulligan no he and blackjack was very different uh but man as he's gotten older he is a spitting image of his dad yes and those hands i mean he's got hands that are like like this big you know yeah. there's like gigantic hands just like blackjack had that's right. the first thing i said to him last lesson damn you got your dad's mitts where those come from you know he's like a damn catcher's mitt mm -hmm. uh but yeah i i I was such a, I, I am such a mark for Barry's work. Uh, I used to sit and watch and study his stuff over and over again. His selling was incredible. Uh, on par with, uh, I, I put him, Steamboat, and uh, uh, Ricky Morton in the same class. Just incredible seller, sellers. And his psychology was there. And, and he moved, even though he was six, what, six, six or whatever yeah. the hell he is, a big, big guy. He moved like a guy my size at that time, two hundred pounder, right? And you know, but was believable on everything. Yeah, and that that's the stuff that always got me. Like the, the clip that you guys sent with Tully Blanchard in Florida. Yeah, you watched. The, I, I kept watching it over and over. Not to watch myself, I'm watching Tully because the punches and the intensity. Oh my gosh! And the way it, he it looked like he was kicking somebody's ass in a he bar. Did. Yeah, and that's how it's supposed to look. And he was out of the business for about three years yeah. up to that point. So for him to be able to just dial that yeah. back in. And it's like it's the the, the rapid fire of the punches. Yes. I mean, it was legit. That's what a street fight is. That's Absolutely. how. That's how you, if you were in a fight, you would act. You that you'd be trying to get as many punches in as possible right. that you can. And I'll tell you what, that's a topic that's going to be, I think, a show in a few weeks because we've been getting a lot of tweets about Barry Windham. We've been getting a lot of tweets Excellent. about, uh, excuse me, Barry Windham, about Tully Blanchard mm -hmm. and that mini feud. What could have been? What should have been? Yeah. What you guys could have done together? What you did do? I think yeah, that's going to be coming up. There's an awful lot of backstory to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of things that were going on behind the scenes and stuff uh, that I've never really spoken publicly about. So it yeah. would be pretty interesting to get into. I did, and I meant to talk to Tully about it today to kind of just get a couple little bullet points from him, but we were just so busy down there with the people with the, the clamoring for the horsemen yeah, you know, in Charlotte. I mean, we're that's horsemen country, legit. Yes. There's a sign, I think I passed it, uh, right before the, uh, the, the Hilton. It's a... Horseman country. Yeah, that's why the Triple Threat guys barricaded up here so they don't. Not, <laughs> yeah, they don't exactly. Out that, well, that's Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia. Be, yeah, that'd be Triple Delta. Threat country. Yeah, right. But before we wrap it up about Barry Windham, just want to say this: heel or baby face, which would you prefer? Oh, I, me personally, just because I started watching him, he was a baby face. But his heel stuff was just a, just as you know, he made such a smooth transition from baby face to heel. And was believable in that uh, when he went, you know, when he first joined the Four Horsemen, you couldn't believe Barry Windham was joining the Crazy. Four Horsemen. And uh, it's, I'd say by a hair, his baby face stuff, because he just was so amazing in the way he sold and fired up. There's, yeah. a, there's, an inf there's a famous photo of him where he's firing up and he's got his arms pulled back to his side and he's arching out he, you could tell he's just shrieking yeah and the veins in his neck are popping out and it looks like a wild animal on natural national geographic it's just so perfect and uh you know and i know probably what happened is back then those old timers would lean on you yeah and you know, try to like, like cover your face so you couldn't breathe and stuff so that when it came time to make the comeback you'd be blown up right so you when you would finally make that comeback you'd be so pissed off so my guess is that picture of barry is him being pissed off as you son of a bitch it's time to make a comeback and it, but what a what an incredible way for those, those veterans to pull the younger kids into that instead of trying to play pissed off let really piss you off, and then you know, it's just the magic. You know, How much so. time do you think uh, Barry would have spent on his entrance as compared to the kids today? What do you, what do you think? How uh, long? 
I, I'd say Barry, uh, when he was a baby face, would have been <laughs> five to seven seconds entrance. And as a heel, maybe eight and a half seconds. <laughs> he had to get to the ring, man. He had business to take care yeah. of. Yeah. Those entrances are a little polished now. Yeah. They're, they're a little, yeah. little polished, a little yeah. contrived. But that's okay. It's a different yes. era, different, different time. Right. All right, so we're going to wrap it up here now. We did about 25 minutes here on the video. and we'll, uh, we'll be back in full force this coming week, and Shane will be back on video. We're going to put we'll a triple threat guarantee. Hold on. We're, we're, I, put it, no, I put it over I there. Put it it's all, it's out of frame. Little, you got this little box thing. It's called like a Wi-Fi thing or yeah. something. Yeah. Wiffy or something. Wiffy. Wiffy. Yeah. Right? Wiffy. Yeah. Wiffy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a Wiffy box. So. Wiffy. Wiffy. Yeah, we're going to be perfect next time. Now, how come I didn't just have my wife hold this and two of us would be in <laughs> frame the whole the time? Why, I, why am I doing this the whole time and, and switch it back and forth? <laughs> so, look, we appreciate everybody bearing with us. This has been a fun trip. I'm just glad we could get something out. Yes. We've been trying to coordinate it for a day and a half, but some of us stayed out till three o'clock. Some of us were in banquets for four hours. Yeah. You know, John is downstairs with Arn Anderson so doing butterfly. Yeah, John's doing something with Arn Anderson downstairs, probably negotiating how the four fingers are just going to be permanently stuck <laughs> on his hand forever going forward. But uh, we'll see him back next week. You know, Shane. Uh, I don't know. There's really not much else to uh, to say for this episode. Uh, you know, I guess we'll. Uh, oh, if you want to follow us, obviously on Twitter at Two Man Power Trip, at the Franchise SD, at Wrestling Pal, and at the Three Threat Pod. You know, please hit us up again. Yeah. The Tully Blanchard stuff is all because of Twitter. Yeah. That's the same thing with the XPW stuff. That was all because of Twitter. Mm, you know, so we'll definitely be doing a lot of stuff going forward. And you know, I'll tell you what. Before we get to this, so when I put the the one clip that I did out there of XPW, you know, I put a couple of the um, like the DVD covers in the background. You know, right. you had your picture in front of it. Uh, Rob Black started following the show, and somebody tweeted at Rob Black and then tweeted at us to say, I guess he's teasing some sort of XPW reunion. Oh, really? So maybe there really is a clamoring after all that. <laughs> who would have thought? So, um, hey. I'll, I'll start with one tweet from Luke Hawks. Luke Hawks, man. Yeah. You started it all. You did, uh, you're did. you the one behind it. So uh, we'll wrap it up here for this week. I'm going to turn the camera to this guy over here. Shane, I get take so it. shy doing these things. <laughs> Shane, take us out. The only way the franchise hey, episode can. Episode 104, mini so 104 out of the way. Beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina next week. Coming to you live with my Wiffy box. Make sure you tune in next week or get your ass franchised. <laughs>